Hello everybody. Today we are moving into unit 8. Are you ready? Today we are going to talk a lot about nature. In unit 8, a short monsoon diary by a very well known writer Ruskin Bond, we are going to talk about so many things in nature. You know, nature can be very beautiful, but nature can also be deadly. You saw nature in the tsunami, and you saw how it was deadly there, killed so many people. But we are not going to talk about that today. We are going to talk about several beautiful things in nature and we are going to observe lots of things, learn many things from nature. Ready? Yes. Okay, but before we begin, let's understand what a diary is. Do you write a diary? And we are going to observe many features which are there in nature. You know, nature is everywhere all around us. You go to forests, you go to towns, you go to mountains, or you go to deserts. Everywhere there is nature. And particularly if you go to villages, you can see nature in abundance, plenty of nature. It's so lovely and it's so fascinating. And when you observe more closely, you can find lots of things in nature. You know, you can find, for example, flowers, trees, green trees. Or you can find fruit. You can also find animals. You can find birds. Oh, there are many things in nature which are worth observing. And today we are going to look at all these things in this lesson. But before we begin, Let's understand what we mean by a diary. Do you write a diary? Do you keep one? In a diary, you write whatever happened during the day and your own impressions and you record them. But the most important thing in a diary is the date. You put a certain date and under that date you write all kinds of things. And that becomes a beautiful record. And today we are going to look at Ruskin Bond's diary. It's a short diary and we are going to take a look at different dates, yes. You know Ruskin Bond, have you heard of him? No, you should know about Ruskin Bond. He is a British, that is born to British parents, but born in India. He had education in India, he studied in India. And then he had education elsewhere. But the most important thing about Ruskin Bond is that he wrote a lot of literature and especially children's literature. And he wrote from his own experience. And he lived in a very beautiful place, very close to Masuri. Have you heard of Masuri? It is up there in Uttarakhand, one of the most beautiful hill stations in India. Okay, shall we begin? Let's begin. I want all of you to take a look at the first page uh, where you have unit 8 starting there. And I want you to look at the date there, the first entry. And what is the first entry? It's June 24th. Take a look at that. Good. Open the books and let's start reading. Shall we start? Good. All right. Okay. Unit 8. A short monsoon diary. Well, what's the first thing you notice on June 24th? The monsoons. Oh, shall we read there? Look at that. The first day of monsoon mist. And what do you find on the first day of monsoon mist? There is monsoon. And you love monsoon? We are now, right now in monsoon. Rain. And when it rains, it rains, it pours. 
And in the hills, you have not just the rains, but you also have mist. And you know what a mist is? All those fine water vapor which rise up and cover the entire hillside. It's so beautiful. Right. So, in the rain, we are in the mist and the mist completely and there's a very important word there. Look at that paragraph. It says first paragraph there, which says it blankets the hill, covers the hill like a blanket. You know blanket? You know, something you cover with when it's very cold and keeps you very warm. And so the mist blankets the hill. Oh, it's so lovely when it blankets the hill. And so the hill is very warm, but there is mist and there is rain. How nice, excellent. And most important of all, when there is mist, there is also total silence. You don't hear anything at all. And you know, look at the last paragraph there. There is Biju who is calling his sister. Now, you can hear Biju calling his sister, but you can't see him. And you can't see the sister either. How nice. Turn the page over. Let's go on to the next page. Now, over here, there's a beautiful picture where which you are going to see now. Look at that. Um, it's a, one, a, day, a day later, which is June the 25th. And on June the 25th, there's going to be a lot more mist, a lot more rain, and the monsoon rain. It's very warm. And in this monsoon rain, some strange things happen. What is that? Look at that beautiful picture on your page. And in that picture, you will see a tree, which is called the fern, a brown, dark brown, big, huge tree. And because of the rain, there's a flower coming out of the tree. And what is this flower called? Look at that first paragraph there. It says, the plants seem to know it too. And the first cobra lily has come out. It's lovely. You know, imagine going up the hill, walking there, and suddenly you discover that in this rain, there is suddenly a flower blossoming out from a huge tree. You don't know where the seed was. It must have been there inside the tree itself. But there is this flower, and it's called a cobra lily. Isn't it beautiful? Take a look at the picture. Okay. In paragraph 2 up there, there are only two lines there. It's very interesting because it says the mist affords a certain privacy or privacy. You become very quiet. You're all by yourself. Nobody around. Very private. And so you can do whatever you like. And so there's a very interesting paragraph next where I want you to find out one word which refers to heaven. Shall we look at that paragraph? Look at that paragraph. A schoolboy asked me to describe the hill station and valley and so on, so on. And it says, all I could say was a paradise that might have been. What is the word equivalent to heaven? Guessed? Right. A paradise. That could have been. Okay, we are now moving ahead to June the 27th. Still rains, lots of rains, um, no stopping them at all. Okay, in the rain, now we go into something else. In the first, in, in the, in the first entry, we saw the cobra lily, and now we are going to see some other visitors. And who are the visitors? Look at the visitors there. On paragraph 1 there, in, on June 27th, who are the visitors? Oh, there is a leopard on the hill. Plenty of animals, wild animals. And so there is a leopard. And then there are these leeches. Any number of them. Have you heard about leeches? 
Have you seen them? Leeches are small, dark little creatures. And you know, they can stick on to the skin. And they stick on and they suck blood. So, they will, they will not come out so easily. And you know, one of those tricks to get rid of a leech is to use, you know, they normally use either a cigarette or a you know, matchstick and they hold it close to its mouth and it is released. But leeches also have another very useful medicinal you know, property and that is when somebody has a wound and it is bleeding, that means it's, the blood is coming out always, they use a leech, they put it to the wound and that leech sucks away all the blood from the wound. And the person feels very comfortable. We don't want those things. But all that we want to know right now is there are two very important visitors this monsoon, as Ruskin Bond says. And who are they? One is a leopard. And what is a leopard? What did that leopard do? It had carried away a dog one day. And the next day again it came. And the grandmother went out and hearing her presence there, a little noise, the leopard ran away. And the leeches, and there are plenty of these leeches, and Ruskin Bond says he gets used to all these leeches and so on. So, we saw the cobra lily in the first one, now we are seeing animals and little creatures and so on. Now, there are also some other new arrivals. Look at the last paragraph. In the last paragraph, we see that, for example, other new arrivals, what are they? Birds. And what birds? Scarlet minivets. And what are scarlet minivets? Can you see the meaning there, given there, in the margin? And there are drongos, another type of bird. So, all these birds also arrive. So, we saw the flower, we saw the animals, we saw the leeches, and now we saw the birds. Turn the page over. Now, at the next page, you will find at the top that there are all these little things and so a comprehension check at this stage in part one. Look at the questions there. Can you see them? Number one, why is the author not able to see Biju? Why not? Good. The mist. Because of the mist. He is not able to see Biju at all. Question number two, what are the two ways in which the hills appear to change when the mist comes up? You can look at the text and you can discuss that with your friends. Okay, so we are into nature, monsoon and we are moving in and we have come to August the 2nd in part 2. Take a look at that, part 2. Still the monsoon rain is going on. And then there is a lovely little description of the rain on the roof. And what is the roof made of? Tin. You know, you've got those, it's called corrugated tin roof. And the tin roof is very interesting. There are two very interesting things about it. That's what Ruskin Bond says there. One, the tin roof protects you from the rain which is very beautiful. Good, you are safe inside. But the tin roof also has little holes here and there. And you don't know where those holes are. And when the rain drops on the tin roof, there is a lot of noise because it is tin, it is metal. And so there is a lot of noise there. But, 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 pitter patter it is called. It rains and then there is a lot of noise. And suddenly you discover that there is water leaking from the tin roof. How interesting. So you are standing under the tin roof thinking that it is very safe. But at the same time you start discovering that ho oh, oh, here and there, there is water falling down from the tin roof and you have to hide yourself to stay away from that. It is so nice. And still it is raining and it is very warm inside that room. And it is raining outside. It is raining droplets inside. Isn't it beautiful? 
Isn't that a good description of nature? Ruskin Bond, how nice. Excellent. Oh, very good. Let's look at that. Uh, August the 3rd, the rain stops. How interesting. No more rains. And the clouds begin to break up. So, rains also go away, the clouds go away, and the sun strikes for the first time. There is sun. <sighs> Isn't it a welcome sight? You are into monsoons, and the rains stop, and the sun comes up, and you look up. How beautiful, what a sight. And what do you, what do, you do, what do you see when the sun comes up? Ruskin Bond suddenly hears a woman chopping up wood. She is taking the wood. She has to collect wood, you know. She has to take it home. She needs fire. And so she is collecting firewood. And then there is the tinkle of cow bells. What does it mean? It means the cows are out. They are out from the shed. They are into the open. The sun is there. And as the cows go here and there, wandering and in search of, you know, greenery, uh, green grass, you hear the cow bells. What a noise. So far you heard only the raindrops. Now you hear the cow bells. You hear the woman chopping off wood. And then all these cow bells and the raindrops and all of them. The crow is shaking away all the raindrops on its body and it's now very relaxed. Oh, it was very tired, sitting in the rain all the time. Now it can shake off all its water, all the rain from its... Now, it also says, he also says that there is water dripping down from the drainage. Oh, all the collected water is now coming down the drainage. Wow, how nice. Okay, and all of a sudden, on the 3rd of August, Ruskin Bond hears birds singing. A thrush sings. How nice. So how many noises did you hear now? You heard the woman chopping. Then you heard other things. You are going to list all the noises. Okay? I am not going to tell you, but you heard them and you can read them there. And so you are going to make a list of all the noises now. First you saw the flowers, then you saw the reptiles and you saw the leopard and now you hear all the birds and now you move into all the noises and so on. Let's go one step further. Let's look at August the 12th at the bottom of the page. Well, there is a little more of rain, all those rains for months together and now all the, all the mist and then the sun appearing and the sun disappearing. All these things keep happening because it's a hill station. You must remember, we are up in the hills, close to Himalayas. Masuri is very close to Himalayas and so on. Right, this rain had stopped, but it has not fully stopped. It's still there and a little bit of mist. And what do you see when the rains are constantly there, umbrellas and everyone is walking out with umbrellas and if you stand in, in your balcony or if you look out of the window, all that you see is umbrellas, all colors, all over. It must be so interesting. So, you also notice among other things, umbrellas and Ruskin Bond makes a list of all the umbrellas there. How nice. Turn the page over. You will see a beautiful picture there. And you can see lots of flowers which have grown because of the rain. Now, the interesting thing about rain now is in August um, that the rains are almost ending. There is sunlight sometimes. And so when there is sunlight and there is rain, you also see a few new things growing. And you suddenly discover that they are all there. How beautiful, very nice, good. Uh, Ruskin Bond, top of page 116. 
notices that the hillsides are full of flowers now. The flowers begin to appear. We saw the bird, we saw the animals, we saw the leeches, then we heard the sounds, then we saw the umbrellas and we could hear the sound of the rain falling on tin roof and now we are going into a stage where we can see lots of flowers or oh, plenty of them. And what flowers? You can see the list on top of the page. Look at that. It says wild balsam, dahlias, begonias and ground orchids. So we now move on to the end of August. At the end of August, we are now into a stage where the monsoon growth has peaked. There is a lot of growth. Look at that big paragraph there, right in the middle of that page, which says, in a few days, the ferns will now start turning yellow. So what do we see in this paragraph? Now we see lots of colors. We are going to notice a number of colors now. Keep your pencils ready and underline them, okay, as we read them aloud. Will you? Okay, get ready. So, the ferns are now turning yellow and they are still, of course, green. That's all right. But then the ground orchids, the lady slipper, the white butterfly, all of them are becoming very colorful now. And you also have, in addition, wild dahlias, which are red, yellow, magenta, all of them, all these colorful uh, flowers we begin to see. There is a word there which you must have noticed, which is Landor. Landor is the place where Ruskin Bond grew up. That is his hometown, which is very close to Missouri. We have been saying Missouri and Missouri, but Landor is the place where he grew up. And so, over here in his house, staying there, that little boy looks at all these things and so on. Now we saw the flowers, we saw lots of them, very colorful. And in addition, we also see some more things in the next paragraph. What do you see there? Snakes. There are rodents. That means all these crawling little creatures. Oh Lord, they have all come out of their holes, of their burrows, and they start settling down in the tin roof up there because they want a little warmth, you know, although they were all in rains and so now they want protection. They want to enjoy that thing. And grandmother said, don't kill them, don't kill them. They are very lucky. They have come inside the house and they are good visitors, guests and so don't kill them because when they come and they, when they come in, they will bring us luck. And Ruskin Bond also says in that paragraph next that he was very lucky because the next day in the mail, in the post, he got a little check. How nice, he got money, so there's good luck. So you see, all these monsoons don't just bring misery because of the rain and so on, but they also bring lots of happiness. And you saw how nature was with the rains. How nature responded to the rains. How beautiful it is. So many things we saw. We also saw the flowers and we saw the colorful flowers and so on. Right. So from there, we move on to October. In the hills, as you know, October is the beginning of winter. And winter means cold. And when there is winter, Oh, it's very cold inside the house, so you need a fireplace and so on. But it's also important for us to note that if it is very cold here in our house on the hills, it simply means that in those higher hills, in the mountains, up there in the Himalayas, there will be snow, snowfall. And because there is snowfall, in winter, we have lot of cold wind coming from there, from the snow onto the hills. And as the cold wind comes down, 
we feel more and more cold. And so we are into winter now. Oh yes, turn the page over. We come to January. We are still in winter. And in January, there is still cold, snowfall up there, and mist, and occasional rain. You can see that beautiful picture out there on page 117. Look at that picture. And that shows you how the hill appears when there is mist. You know, when you drive up the hill, if you're going there, you're full of mist. You cannot see further up. You have to drive very slowly, you have to switch on the lights, you have to keep honking the horn and very careful driving because you don't know what is ahead of you. And so that is the kind of mist on the hills. And this makes Ruskin Bond write a small poem. Look at the poem on page 117. Shall we read it? Good. Read it with me. Winter reigns in the hills. In the hushed silence of the house, when I'm quite alone, and my friend who was here has gone, it's very lonely. It's very quiet. In the winter, it's very quiet. The house is very quiet. I can hear only silence, no other noise at all. As there is, as I sit in a liquid silence, a silence within, within me also, there is silence within my soul, within my heart, everywhere, all over, surrounded by what? Only the rhythm of rain. And that rain is a very steady drift of water on leaves, on lemons, on roof, drumming, drumming on drenched dahlias and window panes. So rain is everywhere. There is silence, there is loneliness and there is rain. That's the only thing for company. While the mist holds the house in a dark caress. Because of the mist, there is no sunlight and it is dark. And the darkness holds the house as if in a caress. And what is a caress? Look at the meaning there. Touching or holding lovingly. And the mist, it looks as if it is touching or holding our house most lovingly. Caresses. As I pause near a window, the rain stops and starts again. And the trees, no longer green but grey, menace me with their loneliness. And what is menace? Threaten. So, the rain, when I look out, stops and starts again. And when it starts again, I look out and what do I see? I see the trees. They are no longer green. They were green a little while ago. But now they are no longer green. But they are now grey and rain. And they look at it, look at me as if, you know, I'm going to sort of, you know, attack you. And make you feel more lonely. Threaten you. There you are. Let's now move on to part two and see the beauty of nature Ruskin Bond has given us.